Welcome to Hayes Post News, I'm Becky Kaiser. Following a public hearing two weeks ago, Hayes City Commissioners are discussing the direction they want to take now regarding the proposed Community Improvement District at the Hayes Mall. According to Assistant Hayes City Manager Paul Brasino, the mall owners are requesting the city's permission to implement a 1% sales tax on purchases made on the mall property. It would be for about 22 years. The money would be used for property improvements. The process requires public hearing, development agreement, and final ordinance. The public hearing was held at last, uh, last month's regular meeting and now the Commission needs to give guidance to staff of the item if they want to continue with the process and if so, then what any, then any type of requirements they may have within the development agreement. So once again, uh, staff is asking for guidance from City Commission and if we should move this forward then at the next regular meeting or one that City Commission should desire will then move forward with the, uh, an agreement as well as an ordinance. Once again, the City Commission will have to give us direction on this item. Developers have told the Commission national retailers are looking to lease property contingent upon improvements. Hey, City Commissioners also talking, talked rather during their work session Thursday about the transient guest tax paid by people staying in Hayes motels. Brasino says a 1% increase was approved several years ago to pay for construction of the Hayes Welcome Center. That building is now paid off ahead of schedule. So 1% transient guest tax was placed or was increased from 4% to 5% to pay for the Welcome Center uh, facility at 27th and Fine Street. Uh, the debt on that facility, we're able to pay it off early, roughly three to four years early, and therefore, according to the, the, the resolution that was passed by City Commission, the, the 5% then will drop to 4% uh, within the last quarter of that payment. Therefore, City Commission has to make the determination whether or not they want to increase the transit guest tax from 4% to 5%, or keep it as it currently is. City staff is making the recommendation to keep it as is uh, within the budget for next year. We did note paying, um, and the City Commission did desire to pay for outside agencies out of the Convention, and pre convention and Visitors budget. Um, those outside agencies uh, include quality of life agencies as well as half the DHDC, I'm sorry, the downtown district uh, budget. Therefore, if the City Commission should desire to move forward, we'll go ahead and continue to pay for those out of the CBB budget. If they should decide to leave the transit guest tax at 4%, a decision will need to be made on whether or not they want to cut those agencies or if they want to reduce the budget. With the national midterm election over, thoughts now turn to the upcoming April 7th election for local, municipal, and school board seats. Three Hayes City Commission seats will be on the ballot, those currently held by Henry Schwaller, Ron Millick, and Kent Stewart. For the Hayes USD 489 Board of Education, four seats will be on the ballot, those currently held by Greg Schwartz, Sarah Rankin, Marty Patterson, and James Liker. Filing deadline for the April 7th election is January 27th. Candidates filing, candidate filing rather, is open now and more information is available at the Ellis County Clerk's Office. Well, there are still some major school building needs in Ellis and USD 388 Superintendent Robert Young says $1 million worth of roof repairs and HVAC improvements are among several critical facility upgrades the district is facing. Of course, Tuesday's school bond issue failed. 50% of eligible voters turned out and Young says that's good and obviously a clear statement. After Knowing the bond had failed, uh, it was a pretty sleepless night and you start planning how do I try to come up with the money and uh, so far I haven't got any good answers yet. Uh, we just have to pick it apart and try to handle those things that we can prioritize. We'll have to talk about it at the board meeting. Uh, probably start right away on Monday. Three juveniles under arrest for their alleged involvement in 11 separate criminal damage incidents in Hayes, including tire slashing and other criminal damage to property occurring October 25th on 8th Street. Two of the juveniles are also allegedly involved in a recent car theft and one is alleged to be responsible for a separate car theft in rural Ellis County. Hayes Police Department investigator Joshua Burkholder says officers recently responded to a report of suspicious activity in the 500 block of West 20th. Two of the juvenile suspects were located inside a stolen truck. The juveniles are ages 17, 14, and 16. The trio reportedly admitted their involvement in the tire slashing and criminal damage 
alleged incidents. The case has been turned over to the Ellis County Attorney's Office. A Plainville man facing multiple drug charges following a traffic stop last week in Hayes. 32-year-old Jesse Lee Eilers was pulled over by Hayes Police for a traffic violation about 1 a.m. October 30th in the 1000 block of East 29th Street. Chief Don Scheibler says drugs were reportedly found during that traffic stop. Eilers was arrested for suspicion of possession of 489 Valium pills with a street value of $9,000. He was also charged with possession of methamphetamine, marijuana, and drug paraphernalia. Eilers remains in the Ellis County Jail in lieu of bond. Hi, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Lowe at Lifetime Dental Care in Hayes. Why pay more for slow braces when you can save money with fast braces? Fast braces can straighten all of your teeth in as little as three months to a year and are safe for children and adults. You can only find fast braces in Western Kansas at Lifetime Dental Care in Hayes. I am so confident with this revolutionary braces technology that I even put them on my son, Hayden. It's amazing how fast my teeth have adjusted and it's a lot more comfortable than I thought it was going to be. So call now to schedule a free consultation and see if fast braces is right for you. But my brother kind of helped me out, you know, because he, uh, he kept on telling me to get hearing aids and I told him I had my ears checked and they told me that I'm all right, you know, but that he wasn't talking loud enough, which isn't <laughs> really what it was. You know? Well, really, I've talked to several people uh, that have come out here. Uh, the ones that I talked to were very satisfied. Improve your quality of life today. Call Hearing Solutions. Happy birthday. I love you. I'm sorry. Happy anniversary. Get well. Congratulations. Thinking of you. Just because. Flowers by Francis for any occasion. 2424 Vine Street in Hayes. This is a news update from the Salina Post. Republicans have gained at least two Kansas House seats, and there are a total of 95 as the GOP's best showing for the 125-member chamber in 62 years. But results from Tuesday's election showed that the GOP's majority could still grow larger. Republican candidates in three districts held leads of fewer than 60 votes apiece as of Wednesday night. If all three prevail, Republicans would outnumber House Democrats 98-27, when the legislative session opens up in January. Records kept by the Kansas State Library say the last time the GOP won as many or more seats in the House was 1952. The tightest race this year was in the 79th District, which includes Winfield. Democratic Representative Ed Trimmer trailed Republican challenger Larry Alley by six votes, out of nearly 6,600 that were cast. The Kansas Supreme Court has indefinitely postponed a hearing on a gay marriage case because of a federal judge's order in a separate lawsuit barring the state from enforcing its ban on same-sex marriage. The Kansas court issued an order Wednesday, a day before arguments from attorneys on a petition filed by Attorney General Derek Schmidt. The court told the parties it wants to hear from them by November 15th on whether it should continue to bar counties from issuing marriage licenses to gay couples and postpones Schmidt's case until the federal lawsuit is resolved. In a federal ruling, or rather in the federal case, U.S. District Judge Daniel Crabtree ruled Tuesday that the state could not enforce its gay marriage ban, but stayed his decision to allow the state to appeal. The state did that Wednesday. Federal prosecutors in Kansas have charged eight hunters with violating the Migratory Bird Treaty Act during the opening weekend of dove season. The U.S. Attorney's Office say the eight men were charged Tuesday with taking more than the daily bag limit of 15 doves in Graham County during the first weekend of September. Three of them are also charged with illegally killing owls. The charges are misdemeanors and were filed in a criminal information a document that usually signals a plea deal is in the works. The hunters are scheduled to appear November 19th in U.S. District Court in Wichita. They face up to six months in federal prison and fines of up to $15,000 if they are convicted. Three former workers at a Boeing plant in Wichita who filed a whistleblower lawsuit against the aircraft maker and one of its suppliers are challenging a judge's ruling against them. A filing in U.S. District Court gave notice to the former employees are taking the case to the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals. At issue is a federal judge's decision that they failed to show Boeing defrauded the U.S. government in a $1.6 billion contract. U.S. District Judge Monty Ballot 
summarily ruled October 8th in favor of Boeing and the California-based supplier, rejecting claims brought by former workers Taylor Smith, Jeannie Prewitt, and James Isles. Their 2005 lawsuit alleged that Boeing defrauded the government in a contract for two dozen 737 next-generation aircraft by using bogus parts. McPherson is among nine cities nationwide selected to receive up to $15,000 for developing a plan under the Safe Routes Schools program, and Beloit and Ellsworth are among six cities selected to receive $200,000 for sidewalk construction and other infrastructure improvements. The Kansas Department of Transportation announced those grants Wednesday. The purpose of the federal program is to encourage children to walk or bike to school and be able to do so safely. Other cities accepted in Phase 1 funding of up to $15,000 are Cimarron, Dighton, Haven, Iola, Lawrence, Lewis, Neosho Rapids, and Olpe. Other cities to receive up to $200,000 for sidewalk construction and other infrastructure improvements are Erie, Fort Scott, Hutchinson, and Kinsley. One of two elephants at the Sedgwick County Zoo has died. Executive Director Mark Reed says workers found the 43-year-old African elephant named Cinda dead on Wednesday. He said her longtime companion, Stephanie, was trying to wake her when workers arrived. Reed said Cinda's health had been in decline because of her age, but she spent time Tuesday stomping on pumpkins and painting. Her cause of death is not known. Reed says the elephant exhibit will be closed for a few days. The zoo has about $900,000 left to raise in a $10.5 million project to build a larger elephant habitat. The zoo has said it will get more elephants for the exhibits that's set to open in 2016. This has been a news update from the Salina Post. Thanks, Randy. For more up-to-the-minute news, sports, and other information, go to our website. It's just a click away at HayesPost.com. Stay tuned. Meteorologist Dan Holliday has our weekend weather forecast coming up after the break. Love at First Fit best describes FDJ's new premium denim jean. You know how your old jeans fade and they stretch out? Not Love Denim. They have a 360-degree stretch, which means no bagging and no sagging the most comfortable jean you will ever wear. Now are you ready to have a flatter tummy and lift the booty? Yep, Love Denim to the rescue. Now we invite you to take the Love Denim Fit Challenge. You'll be glad you did. Come see us at Mamzelle's and see what Love Denim is all about at Mamzelle's Centennial Plaza, Hayes. Gibson's Healthmark Pharmacy and Joaquinia Pharmacy plus a whole lot more. Healthmark pharmacies are locally owned pharmacies dedicated to you, the customer. Stop into Gibson's and enjoy a friendly smile and a helping hand. Whether you need photos, home health, beauty aids, cosmetics, count on Gibson's. When it comes to pharmacy, there is no better choice. Gibson's HealthMart pharmacists take the time to get to know you, explain your medications, and answer questions you may have. Gibson's HealthMart in downtown Joaquini. HealthMart, caring for you and about you. It's a great place to watch TV, just like your backyard, break time at the office, or waiting for your ride. Now you can watch TV everywhere. Stream your favorite shows or live TV from many channels in your cable package on any computer, tablet, or smartphone. It's all included with your Eagle Communications TV service for no extra cost. Sign up to watch TV everywhere today. Call or visit eaglecom.net to learn more. With a partly cloudy sky, we will be cool overnight down to 38 and a light south wind. Sunshine and a bit warmer on Friday afternoon with a high 72. It'll be breezy and 41 on Friday night. And then Saturday, sunny, windy and cooler with a high 56. From the Eagle Stormwatch Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Dan Holliday. That's Hayes Post News. I'm Becky Kaiser. Thanks for being with us. The Eagle Community Television Oil and Gas Report, brought to you by WW Drilling of Waukeny, with six rigs serving Central and Western Kansas.
The Eagle Community Television Oil and Gas Report, brought to you by WW Drilling of Wakini, with six rigs serving central and western Kansas.